Okay, so first I'm going to go, well, I already found my images. I'll include them in, um, in your tutorial folder. The ones that, the options that I found to be good as far as the coffee cup. I only found one really good tree image, but there's several coffee cups that work. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to hit open. And I'm going to find my folder where I stored it. This is going to be different for you. Okay, so these are my coffee cup options. I have this guy, this guy, this guy, and then one down here. Um, I found most, actually all these images on a website called Pixabay. It's, um, it's a website where photographers can share images and download images for free and they're all in the public domain. Um, it's a, it's a pretty good website. Um, another good one is Unsplash, but it doesn't have a lot of photos on it. So, um, yeah, that's where I found my images. So I'm going to use, I haven't used this one yet, so I'm going to use that one. I'm just going to open it directly into Photoshop. You can also, when you're in your file browser, you can right click on the image and say, open with Photoshop. Um, and if Photoshop's not on the list, you go down and say select another program, and then usually it's in there if you have Photoshop. If you don't, you're kind of out of luck and shouldn't be doing this tutorial. Anyway, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out the front of the coffee cup. So I like to use the brush selection tool. It's called the quick selection tool, but I call it the brush selection tool because it has a brush on it and it has a selection thing on it. It's kind of like a smart... It's a smart selector type of thing. So when you're using it, you never want, if you guys can see the brush, it's the little round guy right here. You never want to go over the edges. Like if you're selecting the coffee cup, you never want to go over the edges. If you stay well within the bounds of the coffee cup, it'll try to snap to the nearest edge. So see, it actually did a pretty good job right along there. It got some of the table here because the colors are kind of blending together there. I'm just going to get the the um, handle just because you don't really have to. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and you see one thing that will make this composition read really well like it's actually in the cup is if you get a selection here and a mask that is really good. So make sure you try to get everything that's in the front and this part's going to be really difficult for the selection tool to pick up. Because, see, it's going to be constantly trying to go, just like it did, um, onto the back side of the cup. Because the computer is only so smart. And it doesn't know. Right, Matt? Computers are dumb sometimes. Right? <laughs> He's ignoring me. Anyway, so now I'm going to use the negative brush selection. Oh! <laughs> okay, only Matt computers are dumb. He just made a face at me. Okay, so now um, since I selected too much of the cup and I selected the back part of the cup, I am going to use the negative brush selection tool to kind of try to take out the back part. And you see I'm staying well away from the edge because it's going to just try to snap to the nearest edge. If you haven't done a lot of masking before, it would be good to learn masking. Masking is important. So and so, th this is a pretty good selection. You see, I have the little ridges right here that I'll need to smooth out if I can't get them to go out in our next step. But our next step, we're gonna kind of we're gonna click on the select and mask tool, and this is kind of going to help smooth out the lines even more. So once you click on that, it'll come up with some sort of preview. You can change that preview up here in view. Right now, I have it set to red, which is a pretty reliable one because you can almost always see red over most images, unless a lot of your image is red and then you have to use another one. <laughs> but I don't generally work in images that are super red. And then I'm going to click Smart Radius and I'm going to mess with the radius a little bit. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. If your computer is kind of old or slow, this might take a while for it to give you a preview of what it's going to look like. But the Smart Radius basically tries to find the edges and um, 
and blend them as well as it can. And see, it's bring, actually bringing in a little bits of the table, which is fine. The part that I'm most focused on is right here. And you see it's kind of blurring it right there, which is probably going to make it so people don't notice it as much, but I might have to fix it later. For now, though, I am going to leave it because I can fix it later. Um, so I'm going to put the so scroll down and make sure your output is set to a new layer with a layer mask. This is really important, otherwise it won't give you the results. Alright, so you're over here, you're in the Select and Mask tool, because this side is all changed. You've done your Smart Radius. Now, something that throws some people is, if you put your radius exactly at 59 pixels, you won't get the same results I do, because there's so many different variables um, with the image that you chose, and how you selected, and what you selected. So, um... I would very much recommend just sliding it up and down a little bit and seeing what turns out. Anyway, scroll all the way down. You can play with these if you want for this, for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, there's not much <clears throat> that you can do as far as uh, refining the edge with that. So you're going to scroll all the way down, output set to new layer with layer mask. There we go. Okay, so it's going to show up like this. Now the little, the little squares, that means it's transparent. That means there's nothing there because it makes the old layer invisible. So I'm going to make it visible again because we want to see it. <laughs> um, but you'll see that now in your layers panel, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Now in your layers panel, there's two layers instead of one. You have your background copy in italics and then you have your or you have your background in italics and then you have your background copy and this right here this little black and white guy this is your layer mask this is really important okay but we'll go over more of that later okay so now we're going to go get our trees so I'm going to go to file um, open then I'm gonna find the it's called lake dash one two zero nine six nine nine just in case you can't see it and it's this one okay so in the next video we're going to mask out these trees